What is going on guys, Little Dog Dog here, and today I'm going to slow down and bring you a quest. Uh, we're doing a clockwork syringe today because there's the new pirate quest coming out. I figured I'd just get the quest done so that I can make the new one as soon as it comes out. Uh, so we're going to do a clockwork syringe. Uh, so this is the final quest as of now in the pirate quest series, but another one is coming out a couple weeks from now, or, you know, it could even be next Monday. So yeah, this quest is done at a 1 to 1 speed. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, so let's get right into it. So there's only one quest requirement for this quest, and that's going to be Rocking Out. Now Rocking Out has its own quest requirements, but if you've completed that quest, you obviously don't have to worry about those. Just make sure you've completed this quest. As for the skill requirements, there's actually quite a few. You're going to need 50 Dungeoneering, 61 Slayer, 62 Construction, 65 Summoning, 74 Smithing, 74 Thieving, and 76 Defense. And as far as I know, none of those are boostable skills. You need to actually have them. As for the items you're going to need, you're going to need one set of combat equipment. It's not actually needed, but to survive it is. You're going to need a diving apparatus and a fishbowl helmet. Those are actually needed. And as for recommended items, you're going to see that I have each of these in my inventory, and I use them frequently throughout the quest, so I suggest that you bring them uh, so you can follow along easier. Uh, especially the ectophile, that's the big one. Everything else is, you know, meh. Uh, and those are the anti-poison, the set of magic combat equipment that's going to be best because you're going to have higher melee defense and then you'll be able to protect from missiles. Uh, you're going to want one prayer or super restore potion to, to use protect from missiles. You're going to need uh, an anti-poison, not need, you're going to want. I didn't actually get poisoned, but I could have been during this quest. You're going to you're going to really want that ectophile. It speeds up the quest quite a bit. And you're going to want to run 10 food, especially if you're a lower level. I didn't actually need any, but I did take quite a bit of damage. And to start this quest, you need to go to your house portal because everybody's house portal is in a different place. Uh, I couldn't put a picture there. So you just need to go where your house portal is, click on it, and you're going to get P Posty Pete to pop up behind you and start talking to you. He's going to tell you that a delivery was made to your house, and click on your portal and choose the fourth chat option, a clockwork syringe. Now you're going to get a note here. Take the note, say yes, and then you're going to want to read the note in your inventory, and that is going to begin the quest. Just hit accept. It'll say that there's nothing dangerous that was delivered, and then you're going to want to go into your house by clicking on the portal and choosing the fourth chat option once again for a clockwork syringe. Now say yes, you know it's dangerous, and once you get teleported into your house, you're going to want to investigate the large crate. Now a barrel chest is going to come out of here once you open the crate, and you're going to be in for a fight, so you're going to want to protect from missiles if you're using magic like I was to save yourself from damage because it uses each combat style, melee, ranged, and magic, but it won't use the one you're praying against. So I'd rather get hit by magic and melee as I have a higher magic and melee defense than I do a ranged defense. So he's got 30,000 health. It's a bit of a you know long fight. I brought some buffing potions, but I didn't actually use them because I didn't feel it necessary because I wasn't taking much damage. However, I was splashing a lot, so it's important to note that he does have very high defense. And he also damages your house. Nothing to worry about there. As soon as the fight's over, your house will automatically be repaired, so you don't actually lose anything. Uh, it's all temporary. All right, once you've beat him, it's going to do a little cutscene, or you're going to uninstance here where it goes to black. You go back to your normal house, and there's going to be a real estate agent by the zombie who's in a barrel. You're going to want to talk to the real estate agent. You actually have to walk around all the way in front of him to talk to him. The pathing in this quest is kind of bugged. So talk to the real estate agent. He's going to explain to you that your house was repaired for free because you somehow have insurance, and it protects against you know, zombie invasions. So you're now going to want to interrogate the zombie head. And this is rather easy. You're just going to get a little interface to pop up in the top left of your screen. And each of these annoyances has a cooldown. So just click them all the first time. They bring a stress level up different amounts, and they all have cooldowns. So you just cl click them, and then once you're able to click another one, click it. Um, so you can see that the cooldown has reset, and you're just going to use that one once the cooldown has reset. Once that bar gets full, you're going to successfully have annoyed the zombie into talking. 
and he'll confirm that he was sent by Rabid Jack. Now once you've gotten the information out of the head, your character is going to pick him up, put him in his inventory, and now you're going to want to go talk to Bill Tench in Port Phasmatis. This is where that ectophile comes in clutch, so you're just going to pour out that ectophile that I told you to bring. Looking at you, guy who didn't bring it. You're walking for Canifis, yeah, or a charter trade ship. And you're just going to go into Port Phasmatis. Go into the bar, and you're going to speak to Bill Tench. When the chat option comes up, choose the second chat option to speak about a clockwork syringe. And then once the dialogue's over, you're going to want to go to Mostly Harmless by taking Bill's boat there. So Bill's boat is all the way down at the end of the dock. Cross the gangplank, and then you're going to talk to Bill. Actually, you can just right-click on him to travel. Once you get to Mostly Harmless, you're going to cross the gangplank and go to the second bar on the northwest. It's just northwest of the original big bar. Now once you get into this bar, you see there's going to be a different looking chair in the northeastern corner. Sit in that chair and choose the first chat option for a long drop. He says, are you sure? You say, I'm sure, and then your character gets dumped into a trap door and then into the basement of the bar. Now Bill's going to be down here, so you're going to want to speak to him. And your character explains what happened at his home. So you're going to want to place the evidence on the table, which is the zombie head in the barrel. Well, it's a crate now. And once this cutscene's over, you're going to want to talk to Bill Tench once again. Now Bill's going to interrogate the zombie a little bit, try and find out where he came from. And because the zombie isn't giving him anything good, he needs you to go get some special item that they use to interrogate. So he tells you you can get this special item from Captain Braindeath on Braindeath Island. So you're going to want to climb the ladder because you can't teleport from the basement. And then teleport to Braindeath Island by right-clicking on the scroll he gave you and choosing Braindeath Island. Now somebody's going to appear behind your character, hit him on the head, and you'll wake up on Brain Death. Now you need to talk to Captain Brain Death. From where you arrive, you're just going to need to go east. That was west. I apologize. You're going to need to go west, and Captain Brain Death is going to be right there. Choose the first chat option to talk about a clockwork syringe. And he's going to tell you that he can give you those items that you're requesting, the locked box with torture materials in it. However, he has some brewers who recently was, went missing in a dungeon, and he needs you to find them. So choose the third chat option, nothing after he tells you that, and then you're going to need to head to that dungeon. Now, it's just on the north side of the island um, where nothing interesting happens. So you're going to need to go down the stairs and then to the bridge by 50% Luke. Go through the gate. Just click through the dialogue of 50% Luke. And then just run straight north from here to the resource dungeon entrance.
Now you're going to want to equip the diving gear, so the diving apparatus and the fishbowl helmet. Turn on a quick prayer, protect from missiles if you feel it necessary, I did, and then enter the dungeon. So you're going to want to run to the northeast room now. Um, like I said, you can use protect from missiles to protect yourself because the guys, there, the monsters down here hit pretty hard. You're going to want to go into that room and close the door behind you to protect yourself. And once you're in, you just want to kill everything. Start with the general because he's going to do the most damage and he can buff the rum crabs. Um, but you need to kill everything in the room. All right, you're going to want to search the dead brewer twice to learn his name. The first time, your character says I should look around to find his name. The second time, his name is just on him. And the dead brewer is in the northeastern corner of the room here. So now once you've done that, you're going to want to head to the room just to the north. It's actually just west of the room you're in, but you have to walk all the way down and all the way back up. And you're going to want to do the same thing in that room, kill everything, and search the dead brewer. Close the door behind you to keep other stuff out. And once you search the brewer the second time, your character will say his name and you can move on to the next room. So once again, the room is just to the west, but you have to go all the way down and all the way back up. Search the dead brewer, and this is going to be the last one. So after you've searched him and learned his name, your character will say, I should go back to Captain Brain Death now, so you're going to need to exit the dungeon and do that. So like I said, you're returning to Captain Brain Death now, so you're going to need to go past 50% Luke, back up the stairs, and into the brewery. So talk to Captain Braindeath, and then you're going to choose the first chat option to talk about a clockwork syringe, and follow that up with the first chat option for I found the three missing brewers. You guys talk about how they're dead, and how he's not happy, and then he's going to ask you to repeat an oath after him, so say yes, I'm ready, and then your character will automatically repeat what he says, where he threatens to beat you with an anchor if you break the oath. So he's going to give you the chest and tell you that Bill has the key to unlock it. So now you're going to want to head back to Mostly Harmless. You can use the teleport scroll to teleport back there. You have to right click on it and it's like the fourth chat, or the fourth option down. 
character will get hit on the head and you'll appear on the sh shore of Mostly Harmless. So you're going to need to go back in the basement of that bar to talk to Bill. So you're just going to go north from the shore you went in and sit on the same chair. Once again, it's the first chat option. And your character will be taken down into the basement. Talk to Bill when you're down there. Click through the dialogue and he unlocks the thing for you. Now you're going to want to open it. It's called the Twiblick Night Special. Hard one to remember. That's why I've been calling it The Thing. Just click through the dialogue options. Yes, 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 yes. And your character opens it and realizes that it's just a bunch of makeup and wigs. And you're going to give the zombie a makeover. So talk to Bill. And choose the second chat option. How are we going to use this to get information? And he explains to you that you're going to give the zombie a makeover until he can't handle it anymore. So at this point, you're going to decide how you want your zombie to look. You're given a couple chat options involving the hair, the makeup, the eyeshadow, and I think the lipstick. It matters a little bit later in the quest, but only if you really pay attention because you're going to make a disguise and the zombie is a piece of it. Um, so that'll be how your character looks. But it doesn't really matter. Any of the chat options are going to work. Just whatever, uh, whatever piques your fancy. So once you've got your zombie all dressed up, the zombie's going to start talking and telling your characters all about where you can find you know, the island where they're making all these barrel chests and how to get there. And you know, you're happy with that. So once that little cutscene's over, you're going to want to talk to Bill, and he's going to have you meet him out on his boat so that you guys can go to the isle. It's called Blood Spatter Isle, which just sounds super friendly. And he decides that he's going to take the zombie head with him to make sure he gets to the right place. So after this dialogue is over, you're going to want to head to Bill's boat. Ship. It's a ship. Which is just on the docks of Mostly Harmless. Once you're on the ship, you're going to want to talk to Bill and choose the second chat option to speak about a clockwork syringe. Say yes, let's get underway and you're going to be taken out onto the boat. Once you guys are out at sea, you're going to want to talk to Bill to begin a cutscene. where you guys get too close to Blood Spatter Isle and begin taking fire from barrel chest cannons. So you can't get close enough with all the cannons there. So your character needs to find a way to get onto the island to disable the weapons. Now Bill has a great idea of making a barrel cannonball boat kind of thing to put yourself in the barrel and be fired to the island. Um, so obviously that's a great idea, so choose the third chat option. Awesome, I'll get right on it. And once the cutscene's over, you're going to want to climb down the stairs here and then go down the ladder at the front of the ship into the ship's hold. Now you're going to want to go all the way to the back of the boat and take a barrel from the stack. and then walk further into the back of the boat and you're going to pick up the tinderbox and the hammer that are sitting on the ground. 
Now walk up closer to the front of the boat and open and search the repair locker. You're going to get a chain. And then you're going to search the, the gunpowder barrel here to collect three gunpowder. You just have to click on it three times. Lastly, open and search the gun locker to get the last of the materials. And now you're going to want to use a gunpowder in your inventory on the chain in your inventory. This is going to heat up the chain and you're going to want to go over to the anvil and use the chain on the anvil. That's going to make a ball and chain and you're going to want to use that on the barrel. And now you've got your chain barrel. So go up to the cannon with the transport symbol on it on the main deck. That's going to be on the eastern side of the boat. And just click on the cannon to go for a trip. Now as long as you have those two extra gunpowder, you won't have a problem. You'll be able to take a ride all the way to the island. And once you get to the island, you're going to want to investigate the perch. Now the seagull from rocking out is going to appear. And apparently he was coming back for revenge. Uh, because of what you did to him with the accordion. But he figured, because of what you just put yourself through by firing yourself out of a cannon, he figured that was well enough atonement. If you choose the second chat option, uh, yes, I am deeply sorry. Now, he decides to help you now because he also doesn't like the, you know, pirates, the zombie pirates and what they're doing. So he says I can, you know, drop cannonballs on people. So choose the second chat option, I am ready, and you're going to become the seagull. Now, this part of the quest sucks. Um, there's really slow, there's really like slow delay in turning, and the barrel chests move around all the time, and the cannonballs do not drop straight down. They go at an angle, as you can see. So you have to manage to get yourself over these barrel chests completely uh, without them moving to drop these cannonballs on them. However, you only have to hit them once to kill them. But hitting them once is pretty tough. So you can see the first one took me quite a bit. I finally got it. I moved on to the next one. And that one, I'm not sure. It might have actually taken me longer. Cause I, I, and I don't know why. Because he was in less space. But, you know, they were together right here. I got excited. Oh, wait. No, no, no. The third one. It was either the third one or the fourth one that took me forever. I think it was this guy. second one was actually easy. And then the last one was kind of sucky, too. But, you know, you just use that little interface in the bottom left to control when you drop the bombs and when you turn. If the bird turned immediately rather than doing one turn and then one turn in two squares, um, it would be much better, but that's not how it goes. So, And this is sped up two times, so it's not actually, it, it took me twice as long to do this as what you're watching. Um, I just figured I needed to show you guys what, how, what to do to get the gist of it, and then once you were finished, because it's, it, I mean, it might take me longer, it might take you longer to do it, uh, so I figured it would it, wouldn't make a difference if I sped it up or not. Once you finally get the last guy, you're gonna, uh, it's gonna end the little instance here and you're gonna be teleported out. Once you're back here, you're gonna wanna swim back to the ship using this little dock here. And once you're back on the ship, you're going to want to go up the stairs here to talk to Bill Tench on the upper deck. That's going to start a little cutscene about how, you know, you disabled the cannons, they were actually the barrel chests, and then you're going to want to choose the second shot option, can you take me to Blood Spatter Isle? And this time he'll drop you off in the docks. Now you're going to want to run into the building and up towards the yellow dots. And your character is going to be arrested and placed in jail. This is good. This is what you want. So we're going to do that. A general malpractitioner will appear and get you. Place you in jail, but you have the thieving level to get out, so it doesn't matter. So you're just going to pick the lock on the door. All you have to do is click open door. Um, and you'll break out. And then you're going to want to go into that little storeroom just to the north of where you are and gather bandages, just one, a mask, 
a bundle of parts and a barrel from the supply area here. They're all clickable items around um, so you can see kind of where they are. Once you got all these items, you're going to want to go back to Bill by uh, going back all the way to the end of the dock where you were dropped off. And then you just click at the end of the dock for Bill to pick you up. Talk to Bill when you're on the boat. And choose the first chat option about how you have a problem with the base. Now Bill is going to suggest that you guys build a barrel chest costume, which is exactly what you do because you already have the stuff that you need. Uh, so he tells you that he needs those bandages, those parts, the barrel, and all the other nonsense to make a costume for you. Um, so choose the first chat option, I've gathered the things for you. He's going to make the costume and end up placing the female zombie head into the the costume. Once you've got the costume in your inventory, it's going to end the cutscene. You're going to want to talk to Bill once again and choose the second chat option Can you take me to Blood Spatter Isle? Now you're going to want to enter the building and stand on the rock pad in the middle of the, you know, the I guess it's the entryway there. Uh, it looks like rocks. You just need to make sure you're not too close to the wall to put on the barrel chest disguise, even though for some reason it worked for me. So once you've got the barrel chest disguise on, um, we can finally start investigating the area. So investigating the area consists of reading five notice boards and gathering evidence. So we're going to start with the southwest room here with the three zombies in it. The pathing for this part of the quest is truly terrible, um, and so is the movement. But what can you do? So first what you're going to want to do is sabotage the gas canister here in the room. Start by telling a zomb each zombie a joke. And then you're going to go back through and brutalize each of the zombies, which is essentially killing them with your anchor. Once you've done that, you can investigate the notice board and you're going to get your first piece of evidence. Now you're going to want to head to the west room and attempt to kill the generals. I say attempt because this room is quite a bitch with the pathing and the size of your um, your barrel chest, essentially. It, it takes a while. See, your character doesn't even get it if you try and attack. You have to manually walk in the room and then the characters can go behind those tables and get next to them and you can't fight them there so you need to kill all three before you can investigate the notice board in this room but you might have to leave and come back to wait for them to get out in the open So we're going to have to come back to this room because I can't get to the guy behind the table there. So I ended up moving on to the northwestern room next. And all you have to do in this room is inspect a zombie. They're going to be laying on tables. And your character realizes that they're drunk, you don't have to do anything, so you can just read the notice board in this room. You'll get the piece of evidence you need for this one. And next you're going to want to head to the northeastern room. I just checked to see if he had come out yet. Just uh, taking my time. So you're going to see that there's three arms on these tables here. You're going to want to start by loosening the straps on all three arms. That's just the click option, so just click on them. And 
And once you've loosened all the straps, you're going to get a little semi-cut scene here where your character leaves the room because he knows what's about to happen. If this doesn't happen, you're going to want to investigate the loose arms before you actually um, leave the room. Your character should leave the room on his own. Bad stuff will start to happen, so the camera turns away and looks at your character. And now you're going to want to go in and read the notice board. At this point, I had to go back to finish the second room. If you don't need to do this, you can skip ahead, you know, 15, 20 seconds. But if you need to finish it like I do, um, you can go back now and then investigate the notice board when you finally kill the guy. But the pathing in this part was really triggering me. I was triggered. So I investigated the notice board. And now what you're going to want to do is go back to the supply room where you got all the supplies to build the barrel chest. You're going to need to exit your barrel chest costume when you get over there. Don't do it yet. Remove the costume. And you're going to want to grab three barrels and three gunpowder. Now you're going to use that gunpowder on the barrels. Should have three separate gunpowder barrels now. Once that's done, you're going to want to move to an area with enough room to put your barrel chest suit back on. So the center of the room will work just fine where that rock pad is. All right, now you're going to go to the... Um, what is it? That? That's southeast room and talk to the attended. When you do talk to the attended, you're going to be told that you need to put some barrels on these uh, undead for them. So you're going to use the powder barrels that you've already got on the zombies. You can use the barrels on them or just click on them and your character will place the barrels on them. And once you've got the third barrel on the third zombie, uh, the attendant's going to say thank you, and now you can detonate the zombies. You only need to detonate one, and it's going to cause a change reaction and kill the attendant as well. Once the attendant is dead, you can investigate the notice board, and you're going to get your final clue. Now what you're going to want to do is return to Bill. Um, so at this point, you can actually take off your outfit if you want to run faster I didn't realize uh, so I left it on until I got to the door I mean, it doesn't really matter if you enjoy it this is the last opportunity you're gonna to have to wear it so run back down to the end of the dock Go back to the Adventurous. And when you get back on the ship, you're going to want to talk to Bill. Going to cause the same little cutscene again. And Bill takes the, uh, the barrel chest outfit from you and he gives you a bunch of small powder kegs. Ask to be taken back to Blood Spatter Isle again, the second chat option. And once you get back here, you're going to want to go back into the building and go to the conveyor room. This was the northeasternmost room that you had access to. Um, 
and we didn't actually go in that room. So once you get into the room here, uh, you're going to want to pull the lever. That's my roommate, if you can hear him. He is just, he's finally seeing his dog in FaceTime because he hasn't seen her for a while. But you're going to want to pull the lever, choose yes, and now you're going to have this conveyor here. You need to block the zombies and destroy the belts. And try and keep the amount balanced. So you just click on the conveyor belts to send the kegs down. Um, and, you, and you can send two at once once you get the zombies cleared initially. So after you get that third zombie, just you can go ahead and send two water kegs down at a time. So that way if a zombie does hop on, you get the zombie and still send one down to the end of the conveyor. Try and keep it balanced so that the conveyor belts explode and stop moving at the same time. But if you don't, it's really not a big deal. You'll have a, just a huge explosion happen here. Uh, this is a solid five second cutscene. And then it'll end and the wall will fall and you can hop over the wall now. So across the wall, run down the dock here. You're going to go east. Climb down the ladder at the end of the dock. And you're going to get a cutscene with Migor and the mechanic. Now they take off in these two little boats, but there just so happens to be a boat for you. Um, and this is sort of the final boss fight. If you die during this fight, you don't lose anything. You just get put back to the dock, and there's going to be another boat there for you to hop on. So don't worry about it. But if you do it the way I show you, uh, you should not have to, you know, get a new boat. So you're going to want to board the unoccupied gunboat here. And there's going to be five boats out there that you have to take out. Now, Migor and the Mech both take five hits each for their boat. All the other boats take two hits. Um, and you can, you're the only one who can repair. You have that little quest minigame interface that popped up in your box down there on the bottom right um, if that's where you have your main interface and you can repair at any time um, so you can run away from the battle essentially and just click repair and you know repair your boat up to a certain point depending on your construction level I think if you have the minimum 67 construction it repairs it up to halfway so at this point I've sped up the fight you just click on the boats here to destroy them I the method I used was taking out the small gunboats first and then taking out Migor and the mechanic next. Just that way I had less shooting at me and I could take them out pretty easily. Now I got to a point where I did have to actually run away from Migor and the mechanic to repair, but it didn't matter because they couldn't repair, so that was fine. And you can actually dodge the shots that they shoot at you as well. Uh, it is a little difficult though. So you can see at this point he started coming at me and I needed a repair. Yes, you can see he's totally chasing me here so I decided to just go after him. Thought I could take him. And I managed to repair just fine. And then it was just me and Migor left, so um, I repaired up, and then I just chased him down. And they're always moving, so they're a little better at dodging than you will be. But once you take down all five, that's going to be it. You're going to get a little cutscene here where your character takes his boat back to the Adventurous. And once you're back on the adventure, you're going to want to go back upstairs to talk to Bill. Now when you talk to Bill here, you're going to be taken back to Mostly Harmless. And you're going to want to go back to the Northwestern Bar, um, where you found Bill in the basement. So you're going to need to sit on the chair once again and you know do, the, do that whole dialogue where you get sent to the basement.
once you're back down, you're going to want to talk to Bill once again. And this time he tells you that although you won the battle, you didn't win the war, and they will most likely be back. And that's going to be quest complete. If this helped you, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if, uh, you know, you want. I read all the comments. Uh, join the French chat, Little Dog Duck 15. I have a clan in uh, a Discord now, so if you want to check those out, there's a video on my channel. And be sure to check out my other videos as well. Thank you.